Welcome back, YouTubers, to yet another watch review from Todd's Watch Shop. Today, I have the Avalanche series watch from Wenger. Uh, this is part of their, their Swiss military line of watches. It's a very nice watch. Uh, normally, I like to buy um, brand new watches, but unfortunately, I saw this one and there were none available. They're completely out on their website. There were none on Amazon, but incidentally, as you'd figure, right after I bought it, there were, I think there's two sellers that are selling on the gray market, which, uh, as you know, are brand new watches that were liquidated from places like Costco or various watch shops. So basically, it means you're not buying it from a watch retailer so much as you're buying it off of eBay. Gray market is okay. Just remember that when you do it this way, that you are not getting, um, you are not getting a warranty. Um and uh, beyond beyond the 30 days or whatever it is from from uh, eBay, that's all you get. But uh, it's a very nice watch. Uh, full disclosure, the watch is used. The person that bought it gave me the original box for whatever that's worth. Um, and he had changed out the watch band, which I will show you a little bit later. Uh, it's, it's essentially somewhat of a field watch. Uh, that's the kind of style that it goes after. Uh, there is a bezel. Uh, we'll get in, into that a little bit more. But uh, it's a very nice watch. I want to make sure you guys can get a good good visual on this uh, before we get into the rest of the video. Um, I really like it. This is this is awesome, and I actually really appreciate the watch, the watch band that the uh, new owner. Well, that's me, but that the previous owner had picked. Um, I actually really like it, and I'll get into it. But before I get into more on this, I'd like to show you the history of Enger, so you know a little bit more about the watch company itself. So stay tuned, and then we'll go back over this. Technically pronounced Wenger, the company dates back to the late 1800s. The company got its start in Switzerland in the canton of Jura. This region is overlooked by the Jura Mountains and famous for a number of watchmakers whose names are too many to list. The company's first line of products include industrial cutlery and butcher equipment. Technically known as Paul Bouchette and C, the company would become known as Wenger after Theodore Wenger, a minister who'd served in the U.S. military, returned to Switzerland and joined Paul Bouchette. They quickly worked to produce a new pocket knife supporting a government contract for the Swiss Army. This contract was split with the company Victorinox, thus beginning the long relationship with the company. For nearly 80 years, Victorinox and Wenger both produced Swiss Army knives. Wenger began production of watches in 1988, a year earlier than Victorinox. Things looked promising for both companies, but they were both hit hard in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. New airline rules outlined the use of pocket knives, which were common among passengers. Eventually, this took its toll on Wenger, and the company was saved from bankruptcy only when Victorinox purchased them. Eventually, Victorinox became the sole producer of the Swiss Army knife, while, com while both companies continued to produce watches under separate names. While the Wenger brand is known for, as an entry-level watch, that's not to say that they haven't produced their share of quality watches. Their most famous high-level watch is the GST Classic, which was a mechanical watch powered by the famous Valjoux 7750 27-joule movement. This watch retailed for over 10,000 US dollars. The watch is extremely rare and came in at every conceivable complication you could imagine, to include moon phase, day, date, and month, second time zone, and chronograph. Wenger is truly an underrated brand, and I really cannot emphasize this enough. They produce watches that range from 100 in today's US dollars all the way to 2000 for their high-end watches. Most of the watches I will review from this company will be in the sub-500 range. For the price point, you absolutely get a substantial value, and this watch is no exception. All right, now that you've seen a little bit of the history of Wenger, and... Um... Just so we're clear, I will always give a little bit of a history of the watch that I'm reviewing. They won't always be a Wenger. Uh, I promise the next one will be a little bit different. Uh, it'll be a little bit more unique. Uh, not that Wenger isn't certainly unique, but um, it'll be just a little more interesting. So this box, as as I talked about is in, in other videos, this is typically what you get when you buy from a, a standard retailer. That would be Costco, something of the sort, or if you buy online from an online watch shop. They're okay. I don't really care about these that much. I, I tend to throw them out anyways unless I intend to sell the watch. This is one I intend to, to keep. Uh, very happy with it. And uh, I'll go into more detail about the watch strap. 
if you had purchased this from a retailer, you would see a significantly different box. It usually came in a aluminum tin that sort of looked military grade. I wouldn't really call it like a, a case, but it would look a little bit different. You should see one right up at the top. I'll put that on the screen. Uh, but this is what it came in and it's fine and I like it. Um, the movement is always the next thing that I talk about. It's a really nice movement. Um, it's the 515S and I'd like to show a quick video about about this movement before I go into any more detail because I always tr I, I truly think that you need to know what's in your watch just like you should know what's in your car. Um, and when that's done then we'll go over uh, a little bit more about the watch. The Wenger Swiss Army Avalanche uses the 515S version of the Ronda Powertech Series 500 movement. The Ronda Powertech 500 series of calibers are affordable, rebuildable quartz movements. These watch movements are available with Swiss made and Swiss parts designations. The 500 series is often found in affordable Swiss luxury timepieces and there are many variations to the movement. So what are the differences? There are a total of eight different versions of the 500 series movements. The 513 includes your basic hours, minutes, and central seconds. The 513S is the same as the 513 but with improved power and hacking feature. The 515 model is the same as the original 513 but with the date at the 3 o'clock position. The 515S, like the 513S, is simply a revised version of the 515. The 515.24D is the same as the 515S However, the second hand is a sub-second at the 6 o'clock location, or it is also used to designate a larger date window. The 515.24H is also similar to the 515S, however, it includes a separate 24-hour GMT hand. Next, the 517 also uses the 515S base movement, but with a day of the week wheel in addition to date. Finally, the 519 is based off the 517, but simply utilizes the extra wheel to create a larger double digit date indicator. There are two versions of this movement, the Swiss made and the Swiss parts version. Both are nickel plated with one jewel. The Swiss parts version will typically be labeled as such, while the Swiss made version may typically state Swiss R9 or Swiss made. The 515S movement takes the 371 battery cell, which supports a very powerful stepping motor. Battery life can be supported by up to 10 years with the hacking feature enabled, but will typically last for two to three years when the crown is engaged. Quality of the movement is quite decent for the cost, with a claimed accuracy of plus or minus 10 seconds for the in-house built movement and plus or minus 20 seconds for the non-Swiss parts version. All right, so 515S, I'm gonna take this out, put that to the side. We can get started on this. So this is not the original watch strap that came with it. As I'd mentioned, the prior owner to me put this watch strap on and I actually really like it. It's a bit big, but it really fits. It really fits the style of this watch. This is a, a PVD case, a very nice coating. It's, it's polished, but it, it is really nice. I, gosh, I really like this watch. My wife actually told me she, she thinks this whole watch hobby is really ridiculous. And she's probably not too, it's, it's probably not too too far from the truth, but she said, oh, you definitely need to keep that one. When my wife says things like that, I, I have to take her, I have to take it at face value. So um, it's a little bit used, but it's in really good condition. The person didn't wear it that much. Uh, the, the strap that would have come with this was pretty uninteresting. It was a black rubber strap. I'll put pictures of that. You should be able to see it from multiple angles. Decent strap, uh, very good, Swiss. Um, you know, Swiss quality, so it, it is great, but this is just significantly better. It's a, it's a canvas. Um, this isn't real leather. This is uh, faux leather. It's sort of a, a, a vinyl. So this is 100% waterproof. Um, oddly enough, you'd think that this would be sort of a, uh, a much more resilient watch, but surprisingly enough, this does not have any sapphire on it. This is a standard mineral crystal. So while that is a very nice, uh, it, it's certainly better than having a, a, a typical acrylic like, like which is on the, the older watches, this does not have the three layer coating. I'm trying to see, you can see that there's no color reflection on this that you might normally get with, um, with a, uh, a sapphire coated lens. This does not have that unlike the others. This is an older model and they don't normally sell these anymore. It's certainly not a 
an in stock, but there are a few that you can actually see um, on th that you can actually see on, on on eBay right now. As I mentioned at the time I bought this, it was the only one that was available. But eBay now has two sellers in the gray market selling them selling them brand new with tags. But of course, there's no warranty. Uh, a couple other things because um, I have I have worn it and I have opened it. There's a seal on the end and a seal on the shaft, and then of course an O-ring here. This is good for 100 meters, as you can see there. Should be able to show you that. Uh, 100 meters, which is decent. And you know, we've talked about this before, but 100 meters is the is the, the length of a football field, basically a, a quarter of the way around a, a high school track. And really nobody is gonna go snorkeling any further than that. So this is perfect for anybody that's going to the beach. It's gonna be swimming, uh, working out, and particularly for the, with these colors, this works really well with BDUs if you're in the military. Uh, this is an excellent watch. It doesn't stand out, but it's still nice and classy. Has sort of somewhat of a tachyometer on the outside. Um, it's not a screw down crown like the Seaforce. Um, date, wheel, uh, normal three hand, PDV case. Very nice. Let me measure that just to make sure. It should be 42 millimeter, which is per fairly standard now for most of uh, Wenger's watches 42.6 yeah so we'll say 42 yeah there you go it's really good um, I'm not gonna really talk about this strap too much more because I don't even know where they got it I can find out but if anyone's interested let me know and I can I can try and find out otherwise it's what it is uh, this is a great line of watches they don't this line doesn't really exist anymore it's part of the Swiss military line um, it's the Avalanche series, which doesn't exist anymore, but uh, there's not much else to talk about it other than it's a, it's a very decent watch. Before I end this video, I'm going to take a quick loom shot just so we can kind of see, so I'll turn the lights off. So there you go. The numerics, uh, the numeric indicators, the pip at the top, and the hour and minute hand both light up, which is actually quite nice. Turn that back on. So this is a very nice watch. I highly recommend uh, checking them out. If you do a search for it, remember the the model number is seven nine zero one six, but it's also called the Avalanche series. And there's currently several on eBay right now. There were not when I was. Could not find one on Amazon either. So, but it's very nice watch. Very happy with it. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like this video. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And if you are interested in having me review any other watches in the sub 500 range, please let me know. And be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much.